for joining us. Minnesota Senator Al Franken is facing growing outrage after a radio broadcaster came forward yesterday accusing the Democrat of groping and kissing her without consent. The incident happened in 2006 before Franken was a senator during a tour to entertain U.S. troops overseas. Franken has apologized and called for an ethics committee investigation into himself. Many of his Senate colleagues agree. And the editorial board of his own hometown newspaper, the Star Tribune, also said that the behavior cannot be excused. President Donald Trump, who has his own history with sexual assault allegations, also weighed in. He tweeted, the Al Frankenstein picture is really bad. Speaks a thousand words. Where do his hands go in pictures two, three, four, five, and six while she sleeps? While the president was quick to jump into the Franken controversy, he has remained silent on Republican Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore. Moore, who's accused by multiple women of sexual misconduct, including assaulting assault on a minor, has denied all allegations. The controversy surrounding him has caused a rift in the GOP. Many Republicans in Washington have called for him to step aside, but the Alabama Republican Party says it's standing by its man. Cameron Joseph is a senior political correspondent for the Talking Points Memo joins us now. Cameron, so do you think that these allegations against Franken, who's a Democrat, takes more of a politi more than just a political debate? That Does it go now into a cultural debate? I think it feeds into the larger cultural debate that we're seeing. And honestly, the two biggest parts of the culture that we're seeing this come out in uh, are the media and politics right now. And we're seeing this coming out of Hollywood and journalism and politics. And these are the folks, because they're public figures, that are now getting exposed and are worth headlines about. And it's going to be interesting to see whether this actually breaks out of these very specific industries and into a wider cultural debate. But I'm saying it's certainly affecting the conversation. In terms of Al Franken's future, I think it's still a mystery where this lands. You know, a lot of these cases we've seen other women come forward afterwards uh, corroborating what the first people say in this and possibly sometimes saying things that are even worse, as we saw in the case of Roy Moore and uh, Donald Trump and some other people. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. I think if this is just this, there's a chance Al Franken survives this. There's going to be a Senate ethics investigation, but we have no idea what else might be coming out on him. And a lot of people have said this Senate ethics committee investigation, it's looking into allegations from before he was Senate. Would it really have teeth in this and would it anything of substance come from it? I, I want to ask you, though, in particular about the reckoning within the Democratic Party, just how they've grappled with handling these accusations of sexual misconduct. Yesterday, we saw Senator Kirsten Gillibrand said that Bill Clinton should have resigned over the Lewinsky stand scandal. Do you think that address sexual misconduct forces the Democratic Party to look within and whether who supports the Clinton Clintons moving forward I think it absolutely does and I think it's notable that Kirsten Gillibrand a has been long one of the leaders in the Senate on sexual assault issues especially military sexual assault campus sexual assault B is gearing up for a presidential run and I think this says she's a very astute politician uh, about where the Democratic base is on this right now and I don't know whether this is something that, that that is a broader cultural thing right now in terms of whether this is going to make permanent difference across the nation. It looks like it really is starting to. But at least within the Democratic Party right now, uh, they really are changing how they're approaching this. And all the Bill Clinton ac accusers over the years that Democrats were pretty quick to dismiss a few years ago, including Hillary Clinton, even on the campaign trail last year, I think people are t starting to take another look at how they approach that. And you know, we saw some leading feminists in the 90s defending Bill Clinton during that period. And I think it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I haven't heard from some of them yet on Al Franken, but I, I think that we're really seeing a very different tone uh, from Democratic uh, members of Congress, especially women right now. And I think that's where the party's headed. And you're seeing the Republican Party talk more and more about, you know, Bill Clinton's past transgressions. Do you think that he'll come forward and speak out about this? I don't think he wants to. I don't think he's going to do it voluntarily. Uh, do you I think, think he'll that be forced is, to, though? I mean, that's an interesting question. I mean, he clearly occasionally does still do uh, a lot of public events here and there uh, and, and some big ticketed items like the Clinton Foundation. Uh, I think the real question is, are we going to see Bill Clinton on the campaign trail again yeah. for Democrats? And I think that's increasingly less and less likely. Bill Clinton used to be the go-to Democrat for uh, especially you know, Southern, more conservative Democrats who were looking for a big surrogate during the Obama years where Obama was really unpopular. Bill Clinton could go campaign in somewhere like Arkansas. I would be shocked to see Bill Clinton down in the Alabama Senate race, partially because they're trying to avoid nationalizing that race, but partially because of his own baggage. Yeah, I want to also ask you about President Trump when you talk about national politics here. We saw him weigh in on Franken less than 24 hours after the story broke, but it raises concerns and some questions about his own sexual misconduct allegations. 
Is there a sense that he's been let off the hook on this? I think he has in some quarters, and I think it's been really fascinating to see some of those on the right who are very quick to jump on Al Franken, who really dragged their feet on uh, Roy Moore, and President Trump is number one with a bullet on that list. And Roy Moore is accused of, of having sexual encounters with teenagers, including uh, girls young as 14, uh, inappropriately groping other women. Uh, and, and sexually uh, assaulting one one 16-year-old girl, uh, and he's the Alabama Senate nominee. It's been more than a week, and Donald Trump hasn't said a word about that. And from what I've heard, it's largely because he didn't want to bring up his own history uh, of uh, con you know th things with women that he certainly doesn't want to talk about. That was heavily litigated in the last campaign. Uh, but the fact that he was jumping on the Al Franken thing, I, I think, is, is I, to be blunt, rankly hypocritical given all the accusations against him. And so I think it's going to be really interesting to see. I, I was surprised that he weighed in on any of this. I thought he'd want to keep it away. Yeah. Uh, so and, many people uh, thought that. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was pretty shocking, honestly. Uh, and, and it just opens this, this can of worms that Trump had been trying to avoid. And I, I think, you know, this is one of those things that I think part of what we're seeing right now uh, is a reaction to the Trump election. The fact that so many women came forward uh, publicly with their own names to accuse Donald Trump of doing inappropriate things, and he still became president. And I think that has really precipitated a bit of a cultural change, at least in parts of the country and, and certain industries, uh, that I don't think we're coming back from. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see going forward uh, whether Donald, these accusations against Donald Trump, we get another, obviously we're talking about it now, it's back in the news, uh, but whether this sticks around and this becomes a longer conversation about the president. Yeah. I, I want to ask you why you think the Alabama Republican Party has chosen to stick with more. I mean, honestly, they're scared of him, and they're scared of his base. Uh, a lot of the Roy Moore voters are incredibly diehard supporters. They think the, these are lies coming from uh, outside, and they, they don't believe a word of it. And a lot of these guys uh, who are making this decision on whether Roy Moore is going to stick around from Governor Kay Ivey on down, uh, she has a primary next year, and she just got appointed because another uh, sex scandal uh, forced the uh, Republican governor of Alabama out, as well as the steering committee that the Alabama State Party uh, basically could have chosen to decertify more and, and de disqualify him as a candidate. A lot of those guys are running for the state house next year. A lot of them have clients who are running. So it, they were scared of the Moore voters, and they're scared of what Roy Moore's supporters are going to say if they throw him under the bus. And so while the national Republicans have a good political impetus to get as far away from Roy Moore as possible, the locals, it's a very different story. Yeah, fascinating also to see, you know, uh, Kayla Moore, uh, his wife, come out and say, even after all the attacks against me, against my family against the foundation and now Roy Moore he will not step down they are adamant this is not gonna uh, they're not gonna step down on yeah this. she's been the biggest bulldog in his corner yeah it's so true so very true Cameron Joseph thank you very much for joining us